Good night, everyone. We all have experienced something that has changed us in a way that we can never go back to the person we once were. I want to share a story with you. Let me get my book. There once was a young lady with a great career, a wonderful husband, and living the dream of being happily married. She received her first degree at the age of 22 and followed up with a master's at the age of 24. Three years later, the couple realized their first marriage goal and had a baby. The baby was born, added value to the family construct, changed some dynamics between the in-laws, the aunts, the uncles, the friends, you know, the usual. Life was grand, and one day she woke up to her partner being sick. She tried desperately to help, but without having the necessary means to get help, her partner collapsed in a matter of maybe one hour of waking up. The partner was transported to the hospital and for two weeks laid in a hospital in a coma. At the end of those two weeks, the partner died, leaving the lady with a six-week-old baby and a home to run and a dream to live. I wish that I could tell you that I made up this story just to invite you into this topic, but alas, I can't. That lady is me. I am that dreamer, that then 27-year-old that had the picture perfect life, that thought that, you know, life was grand. But for me, I've learned that real is better than perfect. And one of the things that I told my mentor six months after I lost my husband was that if I did not lose my mind in those six months, I was never going to lose my mind. And so today, I stand in front of you, eight years to the day of his passing, to share with you my emotional intelligence and how I was able to craft it to be a better mother, a better therapist, a better friend, a better Barbadian. Thanks. So... I had a little bit more experience than the average bear with regards to dealing with emotions. Three years to my husband's passing, I was a practicing marriage and family therapist. And one of the things that I recognized was that people, we all have emotions. We all have a way that we only know how to connect to the world. But somewhere along that way, we're disconnected by other people's opinions of how we should feel how we should think, how we should behave. So for me, as I started to think about how I was going to actually survive in this crazy world, one of the things that I was introduced to was something called experiential therapy through a great gentleman called Ted Morehouse, who's now deceased. And he talked about the principle of the fact that we are 20% behavior and everything else is 80%. So what people see of you is only 20%. The rest, recovered with our early childhood experiences, our attitudes, values, and belief systems, and our thoughts and feelings. And for me, one of the things that I took away from Ted's talk, pretty much, was significant emotional experiences as well as feelings. And I started to wonder, how do Barbadians even begin to understand how to craft their emotional intelligence. So for me, one of the things that I looked at was emotional intelligence, and this actually is a term that was coined in 1990, so it's relatively new, by John D. Mears and Peter Salavoy. And all it talks about is that emotional intelligence is the ability to recognize, understand, and manage our own emotions. And it's also the ability to recognize, understand, and influence the emotion of others. So what does that mean? It means that we're pretty powerful human beings in our interactions with people. Now, as an audience, I know you guys have been walking. At some point in life, you walked through Bridgetown or walk anywhere in the supermarket, and you have heard a mother or a father about to school or um, actually beat a child. The child starts to wail uncontrollably. And the Beijing accent come out, shut up or let me get something else to cry for. 
That, my friends, is the beginning of emotional stunting. The body wants to cry, to create a catharsis, but it's not being allowed to for fear of shame, right? Or just the fact that an adult told you not to cry, even though they gave you something to cry. How many of you have experienced that, are actually facing that to this day, where you want to be able to respond in a matter that you're not allowed to? It feels wrong, but it's actually right for your own body. So with regards to emotional intelligence, what I set out for the, five, for the past five years is really looking at how do we craft emotional intelligence to children, to our colleagues, to our mothers, to our fathers. And one of the things that Ted did was talk about the basic emotions. Feelings are neither good or bad. They just are what they are. So our emotions, basic, there are four basic emotions. Happy, sad, angry, and fear. And throughout my grief, I had to work towards those things. One of the things that I worked with relentlessly was dealing with the fact that if my son got sick and it was anywhere close to my husband's illness, I would be fearful that I would lose him. Another thing for me, I would get upset and angry about how people t treated the concept of grief and thought that grief just disappeared because the person was in the grave. But for me, the shining light was always that. Even in my sad moments, I always had moments of happiness because I had my son and I had a reason to smile. So this is what I had to do. Face everything and rise. Right. So for me, one of the things that I want us to think about as Barbadians in our Barbadian society is how are we crafting our emotional intelligence? When are we taking the risk to actually engage in an intellectual conversation about how we feel about each other? I have a saying, you get vexed, you get back pleased. Because that's simply how it works. To hold those emotions in, to stifle them to the point where you are actually destroying your own per intrapersonal perspective does more harm to the Barbadian society, does more harm to your family, does more harm to your job than any other external entity could. The Yale Center of Emotional Intelligence states that emotion drives learning, decision-making, creativity, relationships, and health. My question to you today is how is your emotion driving your process? What are you doing differently to actually begin to heal? That's my teach. He's my heart center therapy. So for me, we are all seeking to connect. That seven year old in us has been stunted, but it's always waiting to come out and with comfort, and play. Thank you.